Guys, let's be honest, I think we can all agree that laptops have never exactly been known for being cheap, and gaming laptops, well, they've got an even worse reputation. However, when AMD released their brand new mobile processors based on their Ryzen architecture in late 2017, we had our first laptops in years with powerful APUs. So now that those original laptops are a few years old, and they're starting to get cheaper on the used market, is it worth picking one up secondhand, and can they actually game? Competently? The laptop that I'll be using today is the HP 15-DB001NA. The name really does just roll off the tongue, doesn't it? It's got a Ryzen 5 2500U processor, which is a quad-core 8-thread APU with Radeon Vega 8 graphics baked right in. The laptop does only come equipped with 4GB of RAM and a 128GB SSD though. Eek! But is this enough for some tight budget gaming? And is it worth picking one up? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at today. I snagged this deal on eBay for £250. That's not a bad deal if you ask me. The only issues it had was that it was a bit dirty, but a quick wipe over fixed all of that up. I want to be careful here because I don't want this to accidentally become a laptop review, so I'm just going to go over a very quick little section just going over the specifics of this laptop. So to quickly cover that off, it is a decent laptop with an okay-ish and good enough pretty much everything. The screen, the trackpad, the keyboard, everything is good enough. It's nothing great, it's nothing spectacular. It just meets my expectations for the price point. That's it. That's, that's the review of the laptop. It's done. So what's it like to game on a machine like this? Well, straight out of the gate, we're going to be limited by our 4 gigabytes of memory. Luckily, however, this is upgradable. But as things stand, it's definitely going to be holding us back. It's actually the biggest bottleneck in this entire system. Now, 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 before we get too far into this video, and before we start looking at performance figures, why don't you guys go ahead and leave a comment down below letting me know what sort of laptop you guys are using. I'd be interested to know, do you use it for gaming? Do you use it, what do you use it for? Just so I know how to tailor my content. But anyway, it's time for the benchmarks. So let's get in and find out what this specific laptop and the 2500U paired with four gigabytes of RAM is actually like at gaming. So I thought I'd start out by running 3 Mark. It's not the most typical benchmark, but it's one that I have in my Steam library. And as you can see on the screen now, it's certainly nothing to write home about. As you can see, we're significantly further behind the average Ryzen 2500U benchmark. And that's likely due to our RAM bottleneck. Typically, I'd recommend a minimum of 8GB of RAM for any Windows installation, but here we have half that, and we're even trying to use it for gaming. And on top of that, the Vega 8 graphics are going to have to take a chunk of that RAM to use for video memory, so we've got even less for our normal system. Moving on, I think it's time we look at some games. Now guys, I want to be clear, don't get your hopes up, we are not going to be testing anything overly demanding, we're just going to be looking at some less demanding, older titles. Things that this laptop actually stands a decent chance of running. So let's start out with one of my benchmarking favourites, it's the game that I run pretty much every single time we have a benchmark on this channel, it is Rocket League. And well, it actually ran well enough for me to describe this as a playable and enjoyable experience. At 1080p using performance mode, we actually had a pretty decent experience, however, as will be a theme throughout these benchmarks, we were being held back by our limited RAM capacity. Moving on to a game that died out as quickly as it grew, Fall Guys. This game didn't exactly run particularly smoothly, but with that said, I have to admit that it was actually pretty predictable. It was slow and didn't provide a fantastic experience, but there were very few dips in frame rate, which did mean that once you were used to the lower frame rates, it wasn't actually too bad and provided a good bit of fun. Now that being said, just have a look at this picture I took on my phone because as you'll notice here, according to this, the percentage use was not only over 100%, it was over 60,000%. Uh, I think you might have a problem there, MSI Afterburner. Uh, I don't think it's supposed to say that. Next up, it's the holy grail of gaming. It's Minecraft, a game that I spent my early teens playing on a laptop with an Intel Celeron and 2GB of RAM. But with this, we actually had a really great experience. Sure, it's nothing special, but we actually had a really good experience, almost hitting a 60 FPS average, and our frame rates only ever tanked when we tried to load brand new chunks. So, assuming that you're not planning on doing any exploring, which 
I will admit is a large part of the game, this game actually ran really well. Fortnite actually ran significantly worse than I'd been expecting, barely scraping above the 30 FPS mark at 720p low. But the important thing is that we did indeed pass that 30 FPS mark, which is the absolute minimum I aim for when benchmarking games because, well, let's face it, no one's going to accept anything less than that. But some people will be happy playing at that resolution and frame rate. The last game that we're going to be benchmarking is CSGO. Being older and significantly less demanding, it did run significantly better than Fortnite did. At 720p low, again, we were able to achieve a more than playable experience for any casual gamer, averaging more than 60fps in this title. It's definitely not the most impressive benchmark out there, but it's one that proves that gaming is definitely possible on this machine. Ok, so I'm going to call it there for the benchmarks. So let's reflect on this laptop and what it's actually like. I've already mentioned that the main bottleneck in this laptop is the RAM. Now there are loads of Ryzen 2500U benchmarks on YouTube, however 99.9% .9 of them are for systems with 8GB of RAM or more. Because that's the configuration that makes sense when you've got this APU. But that doesn't mean that this laptop is necessarily bad, because well, let's remember that there are certain aspects of a laptop which are upgradable, and others which aren't. If we wanted to upgrade this laptop, we could upgrade both the SSD and the RAM, which just so happen to be the two main aspects of a laptop which are holding it back the most. So for not much extra money, you do have the potential to upgrade both of these components and have a pretty competent budget gaming laptop at the end of the day. It would be able to play basic games at a decent frame rate. So really, is there much to lose? At the beginning of the video, you'll remember I posed the question, what's the catch? Well, the answer to that is one word. It's effort. Sure, you can easily buy a £600 gaming laptop and have a great time. Or you could go ahead and buy a much, much cheaper laptop, invest the time and the money it takes to research and upgrade it, and have a pretty comparable experience for significantly less. So if, like me, you're interested in saving a buck or two, then a used budget Ryzen system can make for a great little gaming laptop. Just make sure that you buy the right one. So that's a wrap for this video. Do I recommend that you go out and buy a Ryzen gaming laptop? Hell yeah I do. This laptop is great. I wasn't sure how much I'd like it when I first ordered it, but this is a surprisingly competent machine, especially if you don't plan on doing any gaming. So yeah, that's my recommendation. Go ahead, go buy one, because it's actually a great little laptop, nice and light, easily upgradable, and can play games very basically pretty well. So if you did find this video useful or you just enjoyed watching it, then do be sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos. And actually, yeah, on that note, I've noticed a lot of you guys don't actually get notified for my videos. You don't even see them in, my, in your sub boxes. So if you didn't get this far in the video, you probably like them and probably want to see more. So do be sure to hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on the next one. Anyway, I will see you guys uh, in the next video. So uh, yeah, ciao for now.